All right, so today I thought I would talk to you about an issue that uh, comes up quite often. I I see it, uh, this question get asked quite often, I should say, and it's all about thread, in particular, metallic thread, okay? So metallic thread, does that ever scare you, bother you, anything like that? Uh, does it make you shy away from using metallic thread? There are beautiful items that are made with metallic thread. And whether it's done on the sewing machine or the embroidery machine, you can use metallic thread for either. You can even use metallic thread when doing long arming, which I know can scare a lot of people as well. So what I thought I would do is um, go over some of my tips for dealing with metallic threads. Are you ready for it? All right. I'm reading these comments. Linda says it scares her. D Springer says she hates it. But DC said not since I found King Star. We're going to be talking about King Star today, my friend. Uh, Deborah says it scares her big time. She has 15 spools and she's afraid to use it. Oh, Deborah, I am so happy you're here today. I hope I can help navigate that pathway to getting back to using metallic threads because it really is a lot of fun and it adds a lot of pop to your project. Now, one of the questions I get, ah, Sue, once I found King Star Metallic, she's had no problems. There you go. We're going to talk about that. Oh, so excited. Okay, so metallic threads. One thing that I get asked often is, can you use both metallic thread and a regular thread in the same project? Absolutely. Nothing wrong with that. Okay, guys? Life is too short to be worried about stuff like that. It's so true. Don't worry about mixing mediums. It's okay. Mixing mediums makes life more fun. Okay, make your projects more fun. So don't ever worry about that. It is not an and all or nothing. It is you get to use whatever you want. Okay, so let's talk about some of my best tips for using it. You ready? If you're into using metallic threads, you might want to take some notes. Grab a piece of paper, write down on uh, with a pen and paper, and let's get into it. All righty. Ooh, Sandy used it on the background quilting for Main Street Pillow. Ooh, Sandy, I would love to see that. That's right, Susan, like same colored zippers. Mm -mm -mm. Life's too short for same colored zippers. Same thing, folks. Go outside your comfort zone. Go outside of those things that hold you back, thinking that there's a rule for that. There are no rules. Okay? Enjoy what you're doing. All right, so thing number one. My advice would be to use a good quality thread. That kind of goes without saying, right? Not all are created equal. Hmm, interesting. You know, the cheaper you go, you usually get what you pay for. So don't get sidetracked by something that is $2 a spool. Mm -mm. Nope, 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 nope. Use a good quality thread. I promise it makes all the difference in the world. I'm not just saying that. It's a promise. So uh, a good quality thread makes a big difference. I like, when it comes to metallic threads, I like to feel them if I can. And I want to find one that is pliable, that's a little bit softer. You know, sometimes metallic threads can be very wiry. Okay? I don't love the wiry threads. I don't like the way they look. I don't like the way they feel. If they were next to my skin... If I had, you know, something that was going to be touching my skin, I wouldn't want those wiry threads. So, and they have a tendency to curl up more and to get kinks in them. And you're not going to be very happy with it, with the result. Okay, so find a good quality thread. I happen to have one here today that I'm going to share with you a little bit later on that some of you have alluded to. I promise. I feel like it's the best metallic thread out there. Just saying. But that's my opinion. But I bet some of you would agree. Okay, thing number two. I've got 10 points to make today. How do you like this? I made a little, like, graphic. <laughs> if sewing, use a longer stitch length. Okay, let's think about that for a minute. 
Uh, some may not think about using metallic thread to sew. Are you going to use metallic thread to, to stitch a, um, to piece two squares together? No, that's not what I'm referring to. Uh, you're still going to use like a really good 50 weight cotton thread for that. But, uh, to be able to do some decorative stitching on a project. Yeah, you definitely could. And I recommend to use a longer stitch length. Uh, if your stitch length is, you know, like at a 2.0 as a default or 2.5, I'd bump it up to a 3.0. All right. You're going to have a lot better um, quality of stitch and you won't have the thread break uh, nearly as much. How do you like that? Nearly. Sometimes it goes without saying that metallic threads have a, more of a tendency to break. But I promise you one thing, with a good quality thread, you should be doing a lot better, okay? You shouldn't have those same issues as much, all right? Know that it happens, but these are the things that are going to help take you to the finish line in using metallic threads and being successful with it. Okay, tip number three, slow the machine down. Slow it down. So... For example, I don't have my embroidery machine here, but I'm going to bring you over to my sewing machine. See this little speed control? It's awesome. It'll be your best friend. I, if I am slow, if I am stitching with metallic thread, I'm going to turn that baby all the way down. Now, if, if I should say, if I'm having problems, if you don't have problems with using the, the thread you're using, you, there, you don't need to try and fix something that doesn't need to be fixed, right? So just, these are the things that you do to troubleshoot and try to pinpoint what might be happening. And I'm going to try this, and if this doesn't work, then I'll try this. So slow the machine down. If you're having issues with thread breakage, slow the machine down on the sewing machine. Do you know you can do the same thing with your embroidery machine? All right. Um, do if uh, if your embroidery machine stitches out at a thousand stitches per minute, bump it down. That's in the, your settings menu. Bump it down to six hundred and fifty. Maybe even do it to four hundred. Is it going to take you a little bit longer to get through the project? Yes. Absolutely, yes, it's going to take a little bit longer, but you'd much rather have that than having the frustration that comes from it breaking all the time. Do you know why that metallic thread does break so often when our, when our needles, because what is happening is it's creating a ton of friction, right? And the friction makes it hot and the heat breaks the thread. So slow it down and you won't have as fast of, of, of that, that momentum going so fast that creates the friction. Okay. Does that make sense? Hopefully that, that makes sense. Barb says she uses speed control on her machine a lot. Yeah. Me too. Don't be, be grateful. We have speed control. If you've got speed control, use it. Use it to your advantage. Uh, if I'm going over a bigger, uh, like a, a heavier, bulkier area, I'll use speed control all day long. Okay? Yes, Jan said it doesn't always take longer when you have to stop and rethread constantly. That's exactly right, Jan. <laughs> you're, you're right. So, so that is for sure something that you want to make, make sure and do. Just... Take the time to slow things down, and it will be good. Yep. Larry says, absolutely, Chris. Going slower helps. Just like the tortoise and the hare. Look who won. Absolutely. I totally agree with that. All right. Tip number four. Try using Sower's Aid. Have you heard of Sower's Aid before? It's wonderful. It's a wonderful product. I've got some right here. Sewer's Aid it comes in a little bottle like this. It's for smooth hand and machine sewing. So you can, I'll use it sometimes even if I'm doing hand work. But what this does is it's kind of like a lubricant and it helps to be able to um, 
just soften those those fibers a little bit so you're going to have a lot less tangling with this okay now how do you use it that's another question i get asked a lot how do you use sewer's aid well your thread is going to look like this right here's some metallic thread i still have it in the case and when you put it on, you're just going to add like two or three drops to the top. And it conditions that thread. And so I'll just kind of just smooth it over a little bit with my fingers. And then it, it just comes off so nicely. And you do have to reapply after a little while. Okay. Um, but Sewer's Aid, not only for metallic thread, but regular thread. If you've got problems with thread breakage, try Sewer's Aid. This will become your best friend. Lynn asked, can we order that from you? Yes. Yep, you sure can. So again, just a few drops right here. I smooth it out a little bit. It's wonderful. Just wonderful. Okay, Sewer's Aid is what it's called. Again, whether you're using metallic threads or use, using, you know, any kind of thread that's giving you thread breakage, definitely do that. Okay. All right. Gayla says she's going to try that tomorrow. Awesome. My friend Miss Gayla from Louisiana is on. Hey girl. Love that lady so much. Mwah. All right. Tip number five. Try changing the orientation of the thread path. Hmm. Hmm. What does that mean, Chris? What does it mean when I'm telling you to change the orientation of the thread path? Have you heard of that before? There's a couple things I want to talk about with that. One is, let's, let's think about this for a minute. Remember how I talked about friction and how it gets fast, it gets really fast and it creates heat? Well, the further that thread spool is away from the machine, it actually is given time, a little bit more time, to unwind, untangle, and less friction. True story. So what you can do is you could actually th set the thread spool back behind the machine. I know that seems really strange. Denise says she does it all the time. Yes, it works. Try setting it behind the machines. Try putting it on your table to the side of the machine and see if that works. Okay, that's one way to change the orientation of the thread path. Here's another way. What you could do, and I'm going to bring you over to my machine so that it makes a little bit more sense, okay? Let's try this. <laughs> Knocking things over. Okay, I'm going to try and hold this with one hand at the same time. This is, this is, let's pretend, hold this out. Let's pretend that this is metallic thread. It's not but let's pretend it is, and it's going this direction. I could take a second spool, okay, a second spool of anything. It can be a spool that doesn't have any thread on it whatsoever. It could be a, just a plain old spool, all right? Or if I have like a second spool pin, this would work too. Now, normally I would thread it going from here over. Changing the orientation path is going to change things a little bit different. Instead, what I'll do is I'm going to bring this up and around this thread spool. Let's see, I'm doing this one-handed here. And now, do the thread path all the way through. This is actually what it's going to do is it's going to change the orientation that my thread is coming off. And by doing that, it actually, uh, it, it actually will untangle on its own. Okay? So instead of having, having that wiry tangle that can happen as it comes off this way, try this idea. Pull it around this opposite way, having it come out in a different direction 
and now thread as normal. Try it. See if it works. Again, if, if you're not having issues with it, don't worry, right? But if you are, try this and see what happens. Always being curious. That's, that's one of my, my other mantras in life. I talk about it all the time, right, guys? Always become curious. What might happen if I do this? What might happen if I try this method, right? And see what happens. And maybe that doesn't work, but maybe something else does. Always be curious to see how it works. All right. Um, Chris, Kristen, hey Kristen, good to see you. She said, thread holder behind the machine works great. Give it room, gives it room to unravel and untangle. No problems, yeah. Try the spool behind the machine or try a secondary spool on top of the machine, changing that thread path. You might just shock yourself. You might be like, holy cow, where has this information been my whole life, right? But I'll tell you, we learn as we go and we learn from our mistakes and we continue to learn from other people. And that's why we do things like this is so that, you know, I can share ideas, but you're sharing ideas back as well. And it's this collaboration of ideas that bounce off one another and go, I'm going to give that a try because somewhere in the back of my mind, I remember hearing this and I'm going to see if it works for me, right? Always, always the way to go. Okay, let's see. What's my next tip? Let's bring up this one right here. Ah, use a metallic thread needle. <laughs> use a metallic thread needle. There you go, folks. I saw someone asked about that earlier. What is, what is a metallic thread needle? Does it matter? Aren't all needles created equal? Nope. Nope, they're not. Right? So what is a thread, uh, what is a metallic needle? Well, let me show you a couple of examples. Here's a 9014 metallic needle. Did you know they even have twin metallic needles? How cool is that for you sewers? Wouldn't that be something to use a twin metallic needle? What, what is a metallic needle? Well, let me show you. One of the things about a metallic needle can move this down a little bit is and I know you can't see that through there but trust me when I say it has a larger hole a metallic thread needle will actually have a larger hole that also helps with having that metallic thread go through nice and smooth all right it also has a smoother surface on the needle and a longer scarf. And when I talk about scarf, I'm talking about kind of that like groove uh, that comes down from, and a lot of people don't even recognize what a scarf is, or maybe they've never thought about it much, but it's on the back of your needle. And that's where the thread comes down into that scarf. By having a longer scarf, a larger hole, and a smoother surface, your metallic thread is gonna go through much cooler, and I, I mean cooler, as in, in uh, temperature, <laughs> uh, because there's not nearly as much friction, okay? So um, metallic needles, wonderful to, to have, okay? Again, can you do it without a metallic needle? You could try. You certainly could try. But if you're having problems, try the metallic needle and it will work wonderful. Okay. All righty. There we go. Number eight. Try a thread net. Have you used those? Oh, I was going to grab one for, oh, here it is. Got it. You know what a thread net is? It's these. It's these guys. Okay. Um, a thread net can be very, very helpful. Deborah said 9014 or 8012. Doesn't matter, Deborah. If you're going through um, something heavier, I would use a 9014. Um, but certainly 8012s work great as well. So it just kind of depends on, on what your project is. 
Okay, so this is a thread net, and what this does, and these will come, most machines will um, come with them, okay? And you just slide it over the top, and what that does is it just kind of holds that thread in place. Have you ever had like really wobbly thread that just kind of comes off really fast? Well, this will slow down how fast that comes off and keeps it at a more steady rate. And so it's going to come through and, and uh, through that. Now, if you have issues with tension using a thread net, then you might have to adjust the tension a little bit. Don't do it unless you have to. Okay, don't do it unless you have to. But um, that I always tell people thread nets can can cause a, a, some, you know, with some tension issues, possibly. There's a chance that it could. And the reason being is that it's kind of, it's going to be, have a little bit more of a tug on it. As that thread comes out, there's a little bit more of a tug. Okay, so using a thread net will certainly help tame that's probably a better word. It's going to tame the thread from unraveling too quickly. Okay. And like I said, most machines will come with this and a lot of people will have no idea what this means. They think maybe this has something to do with the packaging or whatever. No, this is, this is, there's a good reason for these thread nets and I love them. Okay. A couple more things. Um, turn the automatic thread cutter off. Okay. Again, do you have to do this? No, but if you're having problems, especially because what an automatic thread cutter will do is it's going to cut from the top and bottom and sometimes there'll, little, there'll be a little pullback, right, on that thread when it's cut off. And so that ends up, ha people get frustrated because then they will start to um, embroider again or they sew again and the thread comes out. If you're having problems with that issue when dealing with um, metallic threads, then try turning the automatic thread cutter off. Give that a try. Give it a whirl. See what happens. Okay? And finally, try using designs that are less dense. Kind of goes without saying, right? But... Um, one of the issues that can happen, especially when it comes to machine embroidery, is that you, if, if you're trying to go over really, really fast, um, some heavier, denser areas, then yeah, it, you've got metallic thread going in at a really high rate of speed and you're going to have some issues, right? So uh, try designs that are, one, either specially digitized for metallic designs. Uh, Freestanding lace can be a beautiful, you know, something very lacy can be beautiful. You can use, like I mentioned earlier, with combining different mediums, you could use a cotton thread or a polyester thread and then a metallic thread, and maybe you do the whole design in more of your polyester thread and then try doing like a few little filigrees or something to add to it with metallic. It doesn't have to be all metallic. So that could be, you know, really fun too. So try using designs if it's it, that are less dense. I mean, I think it kind of goes without saying, right? Um, it's going to make uh, a lot prettier project. You're not going to have, you know, all these issues that some people tend to um, have when it comes to using metallic threads. Okay. Uh, Kathy asked, do people use the metallic for the shine? Yeah, probably. I, I would say so, Kathy. Um, unless there's another reason why people use it that I'm not aware of, but I would say it's mostly for the shine. It's for that little extra pop, you know, if you will, on a project, because it certainly does give that extra pop to a project. It's, it's more, it, there's just more shine to it. There's more, it's more glittery, you know, if you will. Great question. Someone asked, can you use it in your bobbin? Yes, you certainly can. Um, Susan is correct when she said that you can wind a bobbin, but you do it slower. So yeah, I would definitely agree with Susan on that, um, that you could do it that way. I would only, usually if I'm using metallic threads, 
Um, most of the time I'm using just a regular bobbin thread. You know, I'm not trying to do the, the, the glitter, right? Or the glitter. I'm seeing glitz on here and bling and uh, my mind's going in all these different directions. Uh, I will, I'll use just a regular bobbin thread without any issues. But if you are going to see the front and the back of the design, and, and it's important for you to have it on both, then yes, that's where I would use a, a metallic thread at the bobbin. Just make sure and wind it slower and um, give it a whirl. Get, all right. Great questions. Any other questions? I hope, I hope this is helpful to you. And I hope you'll give it another shot if you haven't, um, if you've been too nervous to try metallic. Let's see, any other questions on that? Um, I, I've seen where people have used all sorts of different things, like they'll cut, uh, you know, they'll cut a, a straw, like a little piece of straw, and they'll have like a drinking straw, and they'll have the thread go through there. I've never tried that, so I don't know how well that works, but, you know, again, um, something to try for sure. So, um... Heather said she heard Kingstar Metallic Thread is a game changer. Mm-hmm. Yep, yep, yep. Oh, great, great idea, Marcia. Uh, Marcia said when couching down heavy cording, use metallic in the bobbin too. Awesome. Yeah, you know, um, couching with metallic thread would be really quite pretty, I think. I like that. I think that would be a lot of fun. Great idea, Marcia. Exactly. Susan says, sometimes you just have to be patient with metallics. Exactly. I, I mean, that's the thing. It's like, if it's going to cause you a lot of frustration and stress and worry, don't use them. But if you're willing to, to really, you know, try and figure this out and see what works best for your machine, because not all these tips might work as well for your machine as they might for somebody else's machine. Right? So, so try them. And if one thing doesn't work, try it again. Kind of like at the beginning when I said the power of the word yet, maybe you just say, I haven't learned to love metallic thread yet. <laughs> and then you're going to find that one tip that is going to rock your world. And you're going to be like, okay, there we go. Yeah, slow down your machine. That was one of the first tips there, was slow down your machine. And that will help tremendously. So, again, using a metallic, uh, metallic thread needle, using a thread net, changing the position, the orientation of your thread path will work. Uh, use sewer's aid. Uh, use um, slow down your machine. What else did I say? Use, use a good quality metallic thread. Okay, all of those things help. Trying a thread net, um, all all of the things are going to help. I promise. Adjusting your stitch length—that was another one I said for those of you who are sewing. Okay, that's not going to help with embroidery, but if you're sewing, lengthen your stitch a little bit. You're going to be so much happier. So, 